So, welcome to Paris Pekin Tokyo Seminar. So, it's my great pleasure to introduce the、uh, speaker today,、uh, Ifen Liu from、uh, Yale University. So, he will tell us、uh, on the very strong block cut conjecture for ranking s e l b e r g motives. So, please start. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and the invitation.、Uh, it's、uh, probably one of the largest seminars I have ever given, <laughs> <laughs> more than 100 people. So、uh, I, I, I just realized that two years ago,、uh, Yi Chao Tian also g i v e a, a, a talk in the seminar on, the similar, on the same topic, but that time was during the middle of our project. So the results at that time w a s not the final one. So, today、mm -hmm. I have many two goals. One is to state the main results, I mean, the, our final results obtained from this long, long term project. And then I will、uh, discuss the main strategy. And some of it, there might be a little bit overlap with each house talk, especially on the arithmetic geometry of certain Schumer variety. Then I will emphasize、uh, a, new, a new technique, I mean, in, in the study of Selma group. Using,、um, using deformation theory of Galois representation. So I will start from the main results. Okay, so this talk is based on the joint work with、uh, Yi Chao Tian and、uh, Liang Xiao, who is now in Peking, and uh, uh, Wei Zhang and、uh, Xin Wen Zhu. And、uh, we started like in 2017, I think, and、uh, finished at the end of last year. So, some, some、uh, notation. So, we will fix a CMS tension of number fields like F over F plus、uh, with C, the complex conjugation. And then we denote by gamma F the absolute Galois group of the、uh, im imaginary field F. So, here's our、uh, first theorem. So, I will first state a theorem that is、uh, more elementary to state. So let n、uh, be an integer that is at least two. And we consider two modular LB curves over the total real field F plus, A and A prime, such that they are geometrically simple. So there is no CM multiplication. And uh, uh, some additional conditions. So we suppose that first, they are not geometrically isogenous to each other. B, both. Uh, So, we consider the n minus 1 symmetry power of the first one and n's、uh, symmetry power of the second one. We assume they are both modular.、Okay. And we also assume、uh, another technical condition is that we assume the f plus is not q if n is at least a three.、Okay. So, I will explain why we need this I mean, a little bit later, but let, let me finish the statement first. Then, the statement is the following. So, suppose the central critical value, which I write in a classical way, okay, in a classical way, n is the center of this、uh, L function.、Mm -hmm. So, in particular, if you allow yourself to take n to be one, which, which I didn't, but if you allow, then this is just simply the central value of the L function of the base change of the second LB curve A prime, okay? So, in general, we consider a more, I mean, more complicated L function like this. If the central value does not vanish, then the, B, the, the Billingson Bloch Cuddle conjecture, which is the general, generalization of BSD,、uh, uh, sorry,、uh, predicts that the Selma group should vanish. Okay,、mm -hmm. then the, the, con、uh, the conclusion is that the Bloch Cuddle Selma group, which I will recall a little bit later, of this Galois representation, okay. So, this twist n is uh, somehow is, uh, an echoes this n here. Okay? So, this is the correct twist of this Galois representation, vanishes. So, this Selma group vanishes for all but finitely many rational prime L. So, conjecturally, it should vanish for all L.、Mm. But、uh, due to some technical complication, we only prove for all but finitely many L. By the way, this all but finitely many is, is, is effective.、Okay? It's not L, I mean, Like some large enough, but there, there's a way to, to say how large enough.、Okay. Mm. Oops, sorry. So, before I、uh, continue, uh, let me give the recorded definition of Block Cardo Selma group. So, in this case, actually, it's, the definition is quite、uh, easy. So, if for Galois representation、uh, of f, so gamma f、uh, to GLV on a finite dimensional vector space v over a finite tension of QL, I mean, here it's just QL.、Okay. 
we define this H1F, this subscript F stands for finite, okay? To be the subspace of the, all the uh, first cohomology of this Galois uh, representation, consisting of those classes whose localization belongs to the local version of this, uh, uh, this finite part for every non-Archimedean place V of F. So what is this local version? So when L does not uh, divide V, it is just the unramified subgroup of this uh, H1 of this local Galois cohomology, which everybody knows. But when L divides V, you need a little bit, uh, uh, so L adic, I mean, actually this should be P adic Hodge theory, but since we consider L, <laughs> it's the L adic Hodge theory. Mm -hmm. um, so so let, let me just, I mean, for, for those who are not, who don't know this definition, I will just give a one uh, interpretation. When V is a crystal line at this place V, then we know that if you ignore this F, then H1 uh, parameterizes extension of this V by the trivial representation. And this H1F denotes the subspace of H1 consist consisting of those extensions that are still crystalline. Okay, so that's a, a one interpretation. You, you can just define this in that way when V is crystalline. Okay? But in general, you need a little bit uh, more on the l hodge theory. So that's the definition of block huddle selma group. And uh, there's a close relation of this uh, fancier definition with the classical definition of the Selma group for an Edry curve. Uh, as, as this is actually the original motivation for Bloch and Accardo to give this more general definition. Any questions so far? Good. So. Hmm? Yeah, it's fine. Oops. Yeah. So uh, this is our first theorem, which is a, uh, uh, stated in terms of symmetric power of Edipic curves. So you may ask, I mean, so when, when we say this is a rankin selber motif, do we only obtain like things must be like symmetric power? The answer is no. We have another set of theorem which applies to a uh, more abstract automorphic representation. Uh, now we, now I will try to uh, state. So uh, since we're going to do uh, automorphic representation, uh, let me give the definition of those automorphic representation we're gonna consider. We call this representation relevant because they are relevant to our work. Mm. So there are three of them. So first, we require pi as the irreducible cuspidal automorphic representation. Second, we require pi to be conjugate self-dual. So if you compose pi with the conjugation of F, it should as equivalent to the con uh, contract gradient of pi. So the third condition is uh, pi has certain uh, cohomological weight that is minimal. So more precisely, it says the following. So for every Archimedean place tau of F, this pi tau is the principal series of these n characters. So what are these n characters? These are just, uh, this ARG means the argument character just the argument of a, of a complex number, which you, uh, by formula is z over square root of zz bar, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the generalization of the, the weight two case in the classical, for the classical modular uh, form. So for those who are familiar with uh, this uh, Archimedean uh, theory, this representation, so this is a, auto, this is a uh, admissible representation of GLNC. And uh, uh, this representation is exactly the standard base change of the trivial character of uh, the definite unitary group of rank N, okay? So before we will only consider this kind of uh, repen automorphic representation, okay? So note that for uh, a coefficient field E of this uh, kind of uh, automorphic representation and every finite place lambda of E we may attach a Galois representation for the rho pi lambda. I mean, actually this is a compatible system of Galois representation from mm -hmm. gamma F to G L N E lambda. This is achieved by a series of work, I mean, in the, I mean for, for many years when Harris Taylor, Subu Shin, and finally by Shin V Harris. Okay, so this is a, some kind of uh, common knowledge now. <laughs> so you may attach Galois representation for this mm -hmm. kind of automorphic representation. Okay, so now I will introduce an 
elementary but very important notation in, the, in this talk. So in what follows, we will consider an integer n, which is at least two, and we will denote by n0 and n1 the unique even and odd numbers in n and n plus one. So sometimes n0 is n plus one, and sometimes n1 is n plus one, depending on the parity of n. So this is a, and we also denote by R alpha, which is the, the floor of half of n alpha. If you write in formulas this way, okay? So this is a stupid uh, definition, but they are very important notation, okay? Mm. Because for later argument, the, the most important thing is not which one is larger, it is which one is even and which one is odd. Okay. Mm. So, oops. Now we also give another technical definition. You, you don't need to mem memorize this definition, okay? So it's a, it's a technical one. We will say that a special, uh, we will call a prime P of F plus is a special inert prime if it is of degree one over Q and inert in F and whose underlying rational prime P is ramified in F, F is the CM field. So, so actually the only thing important is this, this word inert, okay? And this degree one is totally just technical. It, it, it's not necessary. And this uh, underlying prime P is ramified in F, which simply means P is large enough, okay? So the only thing keeping in your mind is the word inert. And this is already re uh, reflected in, in this terminology. Okay, so the important thing is this P is inert in F. Okay. Now I can state the theorem in the abstract version. So we consider two relevant representations. I, I call this pi zero pi one of GLN zero AF and the GLN one AF respectively. Okay, and I let E be a number field that is a coefficient field for both pi zero and pi one. Again, there are some conditions. So first suppose that there exists a, I mean, you, you can ignore this very, it doesn't matter. Is, is this a special inert prime P of F plus such that the even rank one, the even rank one is Steinberg and the order rank one at P is unramified whose Satake parameter contains one exactly one. So let me explain a little bit about this condition. So since pi one is conjugate self dual, so its Satake parameter is given by uh, N1 uh, complex numbers, uh, invertible complex numbers that appear in pair. So it's alpha, alpha inverse, uh, beta, beta inverse, gamma, gamma inverse. And since N1 is the uh, order rank, so one must appear in the Satake parameter. Mm -hmm. So this condition is a genericity condition, which means that it exactly contains one once, okay? It should not contain three one or five one, just exactly once, okay? And the second condition is easier, which means that for, uh, for each of them, pi zero and pi one, it is super cuspidal somewhere, okay? So for alpha is zero and one, there exists a non-Archimedean place W alpha of F, such that pi alpha at W alpha is super cuspidal. Condition C is same as before. We require F plus not to be Q if N is at least a three. So the conclusion is same as before. So if the central critical value, which I write in the, in the automorphic way, which means half is the center, is not zero, then for all but finitely many primes lambda of E, the block out of Selma group, H1F F with the correct twist vanishes, okay? So let me explain a little bit why we needed these three conditions, okay? Yeah. So why A, B, and C? So A is needed really due to our method, okay? So the main method is the so-called arithmetic level raising. So A is needed for the existence of so-called level raising prime, which we will uh, go, go with more details later. So namely, we need those primes at which the Frobenius X on this scalar representation v a special way modulo various lambda. Okay, so I'm vague now, but I will be more precise later. Okay. So, I mean, as already you can see, uh, this condition must uh, specify some particular elements in this scalar representation, right? And how about the b? Okay, b is easier. I mean, b is needed so that d 
these two Galois re representation are absolutely irreducible modular or but finitely many lambda. Okay, so due to our technical reason, we need a, a residual abs absoluteness for this two Galois representation. But just like, let me let me give a remark. So, I mean, conjecturally, conjecturally, B should this sentence should automatically be satisfied without even without this condition. But uh, our current knowledge doesn't give that, okay? So we, we put a condition to make sure this is known under condition B. I mean, B is not really needed. It is always should be true that uh, it is absolutely irreducible modular all but finitely lambda. Okay, for, for those experts, let me just give another important remark. You may feel that this condition might be used for the gangrous prosad conjecture, but actually no, okay? We, we have already removed this condition when we use this gangrose prosthetic conjecture, we will, which I will say it later, okay? So this is not for GGP conjecture. This is only to ensure that the Galois representation is absolutely irreducible, residually absolutely irreducible for all but finitely lambda, okay? So C, so how about C? You see this condition C also in the previous theorem uh, for AB curves. So C is needed because two ingredients we need are not available when F is Q and N is at least the three at this moment. So yes, the first is the cohomology of the stable part of the unitary Shimura variety, which is not compact when F is Q. And somehow I cannot find the literature that is responsible for, for this cohomology at this moment. And the second, uh, we, we need a result by Karani Schalter on this uh, vanishing of, of non-middle degree cohomology. Uh, this is a recent work. And some of you may know that uh, recently Karani Schultz extended their result to non-compact Shimura variety as well. However, they still assume F is not Q, okay? Even for their recent result. So when F is Q, there are two difficulties for all these kind of results. First is that the, the uh, involving Shimura varieties are not compact anymore. That's the first difficulty. The second is difficult is uh, the appearance of so-called cuspidal subgroup. That is something complicated uh, during this uh, stabilization of trace formula. And it only appears in the unitary group case when F is Q. Okay, so I mean C is still some technical issue. So as long as these two things are cleared when F is Q, then our theorems can automatically extend uh, by removing C. In fact, when, when we write our paper, we, we just assume these two things and go through the whole process without assuming C, okay? Any questions for the main results? Okay, good. So mm -hmm. let me give a remark. Uh, okay, let me give a remark. We also obtain results. So you can see this is, all these results are in the rank zero case. So L, L value, the order vanishing of L value is zero implies the thermal group has rank zero. So you may also ask, uh, can we obtain something in the rank one case as, as Kohle Wagen did? The answer is uh, partially yes. We, we do have a partial result toward the rank one case, but mm. I'm not gonna state because first it's technical, second uh, it's just a partial result. <laughs> okay? So I'm not gonna state that. Okay? So now I'm gonna explain some main steps. So, uh, yeah. So first uh, step is how to use this condition. How to use this condition. This is a really some analytical condition, right? I mean, how to really use this analytic condition to, to obtain some arithmetic uh, information. Mm -hmm. So this is the GGP conjecture, which is I will now state first. So step one is uh, to use Gangos Prasad to relate this L value to certain period integral on definite uh, Shimura set. So let's start from this condition, uh, the central value does not vanish. So there we can obtain the following uh, conclusion. Uh, the conclusion is quite long, okay? So, but uh, let, let's do this slowly. So first we can find a, a unique pair of totally positive definite Hermitian space, Vn and Vn plus one over F, in which Vn has dimension N, and the Vn plus one is simply Vn direct sum with a unit line where E has norm one. Okay, that's the first thing. 
The second thing is that for alpha equals zero and one, we can find a actually unique irreducible sub-representation pi alpha of this uh, adelic unitary group contained in, the, in this uh, space of automorphic functions on UV alpha such that, I mean, this is cuspidal automatically because uh, it's, it's, it's definite unitary group, okay? Such that uh, the base change of pi alpha is the bigger pi alpha. Third is that we can find OE valued functions, F0 in pi zero. I mean, by construction, this representation are automatic, automatically realized on the space of uh, auto, automorphic functions. We can find the functions F0 in the first representation and F1 in the pi one, such that the diagonal integration is non-zero. So this is a period integral. I mean, I'm writing this in a fancy way and as an integral, but in fact, it's just a finite sum because as long as you fix an open complex subgroup, this double quotient is a finite set. Okay, so this is in fact a finite sum, but I'm just writing it in a fancy way. Okay, that's the, the whole, this is the, the, the content of the gangos prasad conjecture, at least uh, uh, one direction. This is the content of the, conjecture, and this is known now, okay, recently known now. Uh, so let me explain a little bit the history. So this result, which I mean this one, follows from a serious work by uh, originally, uh, the beginning by Jackie Rallis, who proposed a, a relative trace formula approach to this conjecture. And then uh, Zhi Wei Yun established the fundamental lemma toward this trace formula. And by Wei Zhang, who solved this uh, 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 smooth matching problem at non Archimedean places. And then by Hang Xue, who solved the smooth matching for Archimedean places. And uh, I mean, there's a, and also by Vaspuji on the local aspect of this conjecture. And on Bazaar Plus C, on very important refinement, uh, and Bazaar Plus C and Zido and Shodo and Zido, a very important refinement on, on Wei Zhang's work. And up to, up, this, up to this point, we know this conjecture, but we have to assume that both pi zero and the pi one are super cuspidal somewhere. And this is one of the most stubborn condition in all of this trace formula stuff. Okay, it's because at some point we want to use simple trace formula on the spectral side. So we have to assume the, the automorphic representation is super cuspidal somewhere. But until very recently uh, by our recent joint work uh, with Bazaar Plus C, myself and the Wei Zhang and the Xin Wenzhu, we <clears throat> discovered a, a new technique that can remove this uh, condition, this restriction that uh, the representation is super cuspidal somewhere. So we now have this uh, full version of this theorem. Uh, so this is now unconditionally known. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the uh, content of the step one, this GGP. So we have uh, start from the non vanish of the L function and we obtain some period sum or period integral is non vanishing. So the next question will naturally be how to use this condition. Okay, how to use this, this condition. Okay, so let me put a little bit more condition because uh, apparently we don't want to write a such long <laughs> expression. So I will put the S V and alpha uh, for this quotient. So this S stands for set, okay? Because this is Shimura set, so S is mm -hmm. for set. So we also fix the choices of F naught and F1 as above. And we also fix an open complex subgroup of this U and V alpha that fixes F alpha for alpha equals zero and one. And we'll carry them implicitly in the notation. So we will not write any complex subgroup in the following discussion, but please remember there are, <laughs> Uh, fix the open complex subgroups. Mm. And we also fix the finite set sigma plus of primes F plus outside of which everything is unramified. Okay, this is a, so basically sigma plus will contain all the ramification that appears at up to this moment. Mm. Any question so far? Now we will go to step two. Okay, great. So step two, this is the point where arithmetic geometry enters. 
So, so far there's no geometry, there's only a set. Mm. So this set will be related to some quite beautiful arithmetic geometry via uh, some better, better reduction of some integral model of Schumer varieties. So I guess this part, uh, 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 each house should, should have explained some of them two years ago, but I guess you should probably forget <laughs> what they are. So let me, let me recollect them. Oh, it's too old, two years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I understand, I mean. So, okay, so I will just, uh, uh, hopefully you can, you can uh, re re remember, recall some of them. So let, let, let me fix a special inner prime P of F plus whose underlying rational prime P is co-prime to sigma plus. Okay, so if you forget what the, what the special inner mean, doesn't matter. This only means, basically means P is inert in F and the underlying rational prime P is sufficiently large. Okay, I mean, nothing else is important. So for alpha equals zero one, we will construct a strictly semi-stable quasi-projective scheme. Uh, I would denote by the border phase, which means the integral uh, uh, model. The border phase and P, P states for the prime P and the V and alpha states for the corresponding uh, Hermitian space over spec ZP square. I mean, in general, should it be F of P, but since we assume P has a degree one over Q, so uh, F of P is just the ZP square. Okay, over spec ZP square of relative dimension N alpha minus one. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, satisfy some condition. Okay, so what's the property of this integral scheme? So I will summarize them as follows. So the generic fiber of this scheme is the essentially just a Shimura variety, but not of our original Hermitian space. Our original Hermitian space is totally definite. So the corresponding Shimura variety is just a set. Mm. It has dimension zero, okay? So this Shimura variety is uh, attached to a somehow slightly different Hermitian space. We call this a nearby Hermitian space. This Hermitian space is a unique up to isomorphism satisfying the following condition. So the signature, instead of being totally definite, this one actually has signature n alpha minus one one at some fixed Archimedean place tau of f plus. Mm. Okay, so we switch the signature at one Archimedean place. And uh, we also require it is same as our original Hermitian space for all of other places other than this Archimedean place and our chosen special inner prime p. So by Hauser principle, this will uh, force uh, that V prime and V are different at P. Okay, otherwise you only change the Hauser invariant by one place, it, it's not gonna uh, work. So we change the Hauser invariant at two places. So, so you get this uh, another Hermitian space. Mm -hmm. Remember, because we have already assumed this P is co-prime to sigma plus, which means that the original Hermitian space should be unramified at P, mm. which means it should admit a self-dual lattice at P. Now, since V prime is different from V at P, this will imply that V prime does not admit a self-dual lattice, okay? And the level structure at P, we will require, it is a stabilizer of an almost self-dual lattice. I mean, if this one does not admit a self-dual lattice, then it admit an almost self-dual lattice. And we require that level at P should be the stabilizer of an almost self-dual lattice. Uh, in which case it is a special maximal subgroup, but not hyper-special. Oh, so, sorry, sorry, it is special, okay, special maximal. Okay, this is the property of its generic fiber, okay? So how about special fiber? The special fiber, which I will denote it by this uh, Roman N, I mean, this is just the base change from CP square to FP square. So this is a scheme defined over S FP square. And since our original scheme is uh, strictly semi-stable, this scheme mm -hmm. is a normal crossing divisor <laughs> of the integral scheme. So how does this normal crossing cross 
Okay, so this is a how, how, what's the strata of the, this normal crossing divisor? So I mean, actually, it's it's quite simple. It's not very. I mean, the strata only has two layers. So it is a union of so the top dimension strata only have two kinds of them. The first the one we call this MP circ, and the second one we call MP bullet. Okay, so in which the MP circ is very easy. This is a P and alpha minus one vibration over this Shimura set. Okay, so this Shimura set has a canonical structure. I mean, originally it's a set. A set can always be regarded as a scheme over F, FP bar. Mm -hmm. And there is a canonical uh, FP square structure on this set. So in, in fact, you can regard this set as a zero dimensional scheme over FP square. And this strata is a P and N alpha minus one vibration over this zero dimensional scheme. And this scheme is smooth. And this is smooth vibration over smooth scheme. So this is smooth. I mean, of course it should be smooth. Otherwise it's not strictly semi-stable. Mm -hmm. So this is a smooth strata. I mean, and there's another one. And by the way, this one is not geometrically irreducible. Okay. I, I, I just use a, I mean, by the way, both, both of them are not geometrically irreducible. I just put them as because due to the nature of, of their, uh, their pre, uh, property, okay. And the second one, this bullet one is much more mysterious. Okay, we only know it's smooth. We don't know much about uh, the structure, okay. However, inside this scheme, you can consider so-called the basic locus, okay. So this basic locus, uh, you, you, you can have a, have a very nice uh, description. And this basic locus, which I didn't define, but uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the point is that inside this small scheme, there are some very uh, important and meaningful uh, uh, cycles, okay? So this basic locus is a Delin-Lushtig variety vibration of dimension R alpha, so what is R alpha? If you remember, this is the floor of half of N alpha over, also over this set, but uh, not the exact same, but I will cheat a little bit. You, you can ignore this uh, essentially, okay? Also over this set. So this means that the basic locus, I mean, strictly speaking, should be the normalization of the basic locus. So there is a, so this smooth scheme, which has a dimension N alpha minus one as well, contains a bunch of, a family of very special uh, cycles of dimension floor of half uh, N alpha parametrized by this set. And each of them is actually a delin lushtig variety, mm -hmm. okay? And what is the intersection? The intersection should also be smooth and of dimension N alpha minus two, right? I mean, this is the property of a strictly semi-stable scheme. So this intersection, uh, you can characterize either as a divisor here or as a divisor here. <laughs> but since this guy is so mysterious, we don't know it's the characterization of itself. So we can characterize this intersection as a divisor in this one. I mean, this is just a projected space. All its divisors should be easy. So in fact, this is a Fermat hypersurface in this uh, vibration, okay? So I think this uh, gives a pretty clear, clean uh, characterization of the structure of this special fiber of this integral scheme. And then the definition of this integral scheme actually use some modular interpretation of uh, some abelian uh, scheme with additional structure. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Oh, so this basic locus in black one meet uh, the white one? Say that again, the basic locus. Uh, yeah, basic locus in this uh, barrett one meets uh, is, is this circle one. You mean this one? Yeah, yeah, so this basic locus. So you have basic yeah. locus in there. Uh, this meets uh, another component. In N zero. Oh no, I mean the dimension is half of it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for example, uh, when, uh, when, uh, so, so for example, okay, let, let me give an example. Suppose mm. we consider V4, right? V4, mm -hmm. okay. So the, the dimension of the, the, this scheme is dimension three. 
Mm -hmm. So dimension three, we have two parts. The first part is a P3 over a set. Mm. The second part is a threefold. It's mysterious. We don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And inside this threefold, we have a family of uh, divisors mm. because it's a family of dimension two. Okay. Mm -hmm. A family of divisors, there are certain Deling-Lustig surfaces. Yeah. And they are over this set. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the, that's one example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Uh, any other questions? I mean, I mean, since I mean, if I give a blackboard talk, I will draw, draw some picture. But now it's a little bit mm. hard. So, okay. So let let me uh, continue. Yep. So I mean, the notation is gonna be a little bit uh, slightly more complicated. Uh, just interrupt me if you want me to go back. Okay. So, uh, I, I try to keep it as uh, simple as possible. So now at this moment, uh, there's no representation, right? We are purely doing geometry at this moment. So how does this uh, representation pi alpha come, come in? So for simplicity, I will just pretend that this coefficient just to be Q, okay? Otherwise there's uh, too many notations. Mm. So I will just pretend that all this uh, uh, automorphic representation are defined over Q. For example, if they correspond to symmetric power of elliptic curve, they, then they are defined over Q. Mm. So, uh, so for, for in the below, you see this uh, T, it always means Heck algebra. That's a common notation. So we have this abstract spherical Heck algebra, which I denote by T alpha uh, of this uh, UV alpha away from P and sigma plus. Okay. And this representation pi alpha, because it's conjugate self dual, it will give rise to a homomorphism pi alpha uh, sorry, phi alpha from this heck algebra to Z. I mean, Z is because we assume it's Q, otherwise it should be OE okay? mm. to Z. And for, I mean, this is just given by Sadaka, I mean, the Sadaka parameter, symmetric polynomial of Sadaka parameter. So in particular for every L, we can take uh, this homomorphism modulo L. So we denote by M alpha L the kernel of the composition of this uh, homomorphism with the quotient map C to FL, which is a maximal ideal of T alpha, okay? So this is a, so let, let me explain the logic of this notation. This M is a maximal ideal, alpha goes with the parity, okay? So if M zero, this means it's, it's, it's responsible for the representation whose rank has parity even, has even parity. And this L, which means modulo L, okay? Okay, now, uh, so our goal is to study the local Galois homology. Let, let me explain uh, the thing a little bit here. So it looks complicated. So first uh, you have uh, the, so let, let's start from the sheet first. So this is the nearby cycle uh, of coefficient, constant coefficient C alpha twisted by I alpha, okay? So this is the nearby cycle for the integral model and the, the both phase MP. So the nearby cycle is a shift on the special fiber, uh, the, the, sorry, the base change of the special fiber to the FP bar, okay? And uh, this is the first layer. Then this is the middle cohomology, middle cohomology of this uh, nearby cycle uh, shift. And then since this T alpha, act on this integral model. This algebra acts entirely, uh, acts on this cohomology, okay? So this is a C alpha module, and we have a, a, a heck algebra acting on this C alpha module. So we can localize this T alpha module uh, at uh, this maximal ideal. So we get a uh, localized uh, T alpha module, which is here, okay? But it itself re receives a Galois action of uh, QP square because the Galois group of QP square acts on, on, on this uh, nearby cycle cohomology. And uh, since the action of the Galois group and the Heck algebra commutes with each other, so this entire localized Heck module will receive a Galois action of QP square. So it makes sense to take the first the cohomology. Okay, so I hope this uh, explains the, this, this long expression. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it's clear, okay. So our goal is to study this one, okay. 
So study what? <laughs> study what, what about this one, right? I mean, what's the actual goal of this? Thing? So the, I mean, at, from this point, it's, it is really different uh, when, when alpha is zero and alpha is one, okay? I mean, uh, when alpha is zero and alpha is one, the, the, the point of studying this cohomology is completely different, okay? So let me first start from the alpha equal one case, which means this is uh, all the dimensional, uh, sorry, this is an even dimensional uh, cohomology because n L n one is odd. So this is even dimensional cohomology. So when it's even dimensional, what we need to understand is the unramified subspace of this H1, which will boils down to the computation of certain Tate cycle because it's even dimensional. Okay, so Tate cycle on this NPV and alpha. So you may realize this is not smooth. So what does it mean by Tate cycle? It actually means the Tate cycle on components of, of this, uh, on smooth components of, of this uh, scheme and their interaction with each other, mm. okay? I mean, this study relying uh, heavily on the recent work of uh, Xiao and Zhu on this uh, Tate cycle on the special fiber of Schmer varieties, okay? So I'm not going to uh, talk about details of this aspect anymore. I mean, rather I will talk about the even case, the even rank case, this is a much more uh, first, it's much more difficult. Second, it's much more interesting, okay? So when alpha equals zero, what we need to understand is the singular quotient, which is H1 quotient out by its unramified subspace. This is called, usually called H1C, okay? The singular quotient, which boils down to the so-called arithmetic level raising phenomenon, okay? So that's our, so in what follows, we will stop explaining further steps toward the main series, but to explain more on this arithmetic level raising phenomenon, which employs new ideas from the theory of Galois definition. Okay, so any question? So, uh, I mean, so one, uh, so it is better, uh, okay, so, so the, the emphasis now is just this local Galois cohomology, okay. So it's better keep in mind of this thing from this moment. Good, so let me uh, continue uh, with the arithmetic level raising. So before I mentioned that uh, uh, the, there's a, a very special condition, I mean, there's so-called a level raising prime, which requires some special element in the modulo L of, of its Galois representation. So what exactly uh, are those special things? So I will explain this uh, at least uh, partially toward uh, this step, okay? So here's a definition. We say that a special inner prime P is a level raising prime with respect to L if the underlying rational prime P is co-priming sigma plus, which we have already assumed, okay? I just repeat. Second, I want L does not divide P times P squared minus one. This is somehow elementary. Uh, you certainly, you don't want P to be one when you modular L because I mean, it will cause them um, some, some, some complication. Okay. okay, the third one is a real, con really the important condition. We wanted the mod L Sadaki parameter of pi zero P. Recall that we have explained that since pi zero is the conjugate self dual, it's Sadaki parameter comes uh, in pairs. So it comes in pairs like alpha, alpha inverse. So we want that uh, the mod L Sadaka parameter contains the pair PP inverse exactly once and it does not contain the pair negative, negative, negative one, negative one, okay? So here's the, the, the proposition, uh, the main theorem of uh, the so-called level raising isomorphism. Okay, suppose L is uh, effectively sufficiently large and that P is a level raising prime with respect to L, then we have the following canonical isomorphism. So this isomorphism is the following. So recall that this is the right-hand side, oh, sorry, this is the left-hand side, is the singular part of the local Galois cohomology we have uh, introduced, um, but we now we take the quotient instead of localization, okay? So this uh, singular part of the uh, local Galois cohomology is canonically isomorphic to another space, which is simply the CL valued automorphic uh, functions on the Shimura set modulo. Uh, the same, uh, this is again a, a, a hacker module. 
module of the same hack ideal. Okay, so you may see these two sets are very different. Here it's the singular cohomology, singular Galois cohomology of the nearby cycle cohomology of some integral model of a different Hermitian space, of a different Hermitian space. But here it's the Hermitian, uh, sorry, CL valued automorphic form on the totally definite Hermitian space. Okay, although I use the same notation, but here it's a different Shimova, right? of mm -hmm. FL vector space of finite dimension. Okay, actually, actually, actually there is a version modular, not just L, but a modular L to a power. But for simplicity, I will not state that one. Okay, but uh, I mean, uh, actually we need to do L to some power more generally, but for the simplicity of this talk, let me just do FL version. And uh, the proof of, I mean, if you have uh, looked at our paper, our paper has more than 200 pages. The hmm. proof of this single isomorphism probably took more than 100 pages. Okay. So this is the real uh, technical result of the, the work. So now I will explain. So this is the meaning of the level raising isomorphism. And uh, probably you can already feel the flavor of this isomorphism because remember that we stop at this uh, uh, some, some non-vanishing of certain period integral, right? Uh, on the Shimura set. And how can you use that? So here is a very important link. We already linked this, the, this uh, Shimura set to certain important arithmetic geometry of some Shimura variety. And that period integral will also relate to certain non-vanishing, sorry, non-vanishing of certain cohomology class that lives in some kind of this uh, local Galois cohomology. Okay, so that's the, this is the most important isomorphism that you link this period integral into some arithmetic property uh, of, of some cohomology class of a Schumer variety of positive dimension. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> okay, so how, how we prove this? So the proof of this uh, uses two main ingredients and these two main ingredients are somehow technically quite different. So the first part is uh, we, we, we study the geometry and the intersection theory on this special fiber. We can show that the right-hand side, which is the Shimura set side, is canonically a subquotient of the left-hand side with the, the Galois cohomology side, okay? This is uh, through a very subtle study of some intersection theory of certain the Lindus Tigger cycle on the special fiber of uh, this integral model. So if you already know this guy is a sub quotient of this guy and they are both finite sets, how can we conclude they're isomorphic? So you only need to compare their cardinality, right? I mean, they're both finite dimensional FL vector spaces and one is a sub quotient of the other one. So to show they're same, you only need to compare cardinality. So how to compare cardinality? This, we have a new idea, a new technique using, using Galois deformation. Uh, it, it, I don't think uh, such kind of application has ever been used before. So this is actually a new application of uh, uh, Galois deformation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I will uh, consider more about this Galois deformation theory. So now it will be more like a number theory and less arithmetic geometry. So recall that we have uh, we have an associated Galois representation uh, associated to this pi naught, and we assume it's residually absolutely irreducible, which is the case for L sufficient large by our uh, condition in the theorem. So we, we uh, denote this row bar pi naught L as the residual representation. So it's a representation with coefficient F L. So we take a special inner prime P of F that is a level raising prime with respect to L. So we, we need to consider a global deformation problem. We call it R mix for the polarized Galois representation. I mean, sorry, B before the details, let, let me give a, a why, why this isomorphism is called a level raising, okay? So the reason is the following. So this ideal is responsible for the representation pi naught, okay? So remember this pi naught, Originally, it is unramified at P, okay? 
So this pi node should not appear in this cohomology at all because this Shimura variety is, is ramified at P. Okay, so if you don't consider this, it shouldn't appear at all. I mean, this whole thing should just be zero. However, if you take this, uh, this uh, Sadaka parameter modulo L, then we will have some extra congruence so that this pi naught will congruent to some other representation that is ramified at P. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, you, you raise the level of your original pi naught so that it is now ramified at P. So that's why I call it it's a level raising isomorphism. Okay, so this is a, uh, I mean, this is a, uh, the significance of this isomorphism because a priori this space should just be trivial if you don't have conditions like this. Because of this special kind of condition, you will have some non-trivial thing on this left-hand side. Mm -hmm. So now this Galois deformation theory should really see the both the original representation pi naught, which is unramified at P, and it should also be available to see the, the raised one, the new, new automorphic representation that appear in this, co this cohomology. And those representation will necessarily be ramified at P. Okay, so we need to consider a global Galois deformation problem that encodes both the original pi zero and those uh, that are level raised from pi zero. So that's, that's why we call the mix because it is mixed from both ramified and unramified. Mm -hmm. So the deformation problem are mixed for the polarized Galois representation classifying deformations raw with the following local restrictions. So for V inside the sigma plus, for those uh, uh, the, the Galois representation could be ramified, we put a no restriction. And the second, uh, for V above L, we say that the rho V is the fontaine Lafayette with the correct Hodge weight. Basically, it says that uh, it's still unramified. Okay, so I will not go to the details of this one. Okay, the key is the following. So when V is P, we want the rho V to be tamely ramified. So tamely ramified Galois representation were determined by two things. First is a Frobenius generator. The second is a tame generator. So if you look at our condition here, so the tame gen, the, the Frobenius generator should have two special Sataka parameters, module L, which should, first should be P negative N0, and the second one should be P negative N0 plus two. Sorry, you see this power because it, it is a, is a tate twist, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, Frobenius and the, the tame generator, you should see some little monodromy here because if this S and S prime remain to be P negative N zero and P negative N zero plus two, then it is possible that you could put a new potent X here, right? Because then you will uh, obtain a little, you will see a small like a Steinberger representation on this block. However, uh, this phi and the T should subject to a relation because they subject to a relation themselves. So more precisely, the relations here, so S should be a lifting of P to the negative N zero, and S S prime, the product should still remain this number. And the restriction, the relation between phi and T will give this relation. So X times S minus P negative N zero should be zero. So this gives you somehow a semi-stable, uh, a node, right? A node in the local deformation problem. So this local deformation problem has a nodal singularity. Okay, for VLs, uh, we, we require rho V to be unramified. Now, we, this is the mixed version because you see both the unramified and the ramified. Mm -hmm. And you can quotient out by the corresponding ideal to get the purely unramified one and the ramified one. So the unramified one, you want this X to be zero, right? I mean, if X zero, of course, this is unramified because the TX by trivial representation, a trivial matrix. So which means you should uh, modulo R, R mix by the ideal generated by X. So you recover R N unramified. And then the ramified one, you should uh, require S to, uh, you should uh, remain S to be this, its original value P to the N negative N zero. 
So in some sense, you need to modulate by this second ideal. And the congruent ideal is the ideal that it is satisfied both condition. So you take a congruent, uh, this is so-called the congruence, uh, this con uh, stands for congruence, is the tensor product of two quotient algebra uh, over the R mix. Okay, sorry, I, I have to be a little bit quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we, by the way, our original goal is to study two things, right? First thing is the certain Galois cohomology and second is certain uh, automorphic form space. So hmm. how are they related to Galois deformation? So here's the key proposition. So there exists an R RAM module, H RAM, such that this uh, Galois cohomology is naturally uh, a module. Uh, uh, so there is a universal Galois representation realized uh, on R RAM uh, of dimension N0. Hmm. And uh, the, the realizing on the space, somehow the coefficient is this HR RAM. So this is a Galois representation. So this Galois representation is some multi uh, multiplicity space tensor with the universal Galois representation, okay? And you can compute its, its H1 thing just simply by computing H1 thing on this universal Galois representation. In some sense, I'm separating the Galois part and the heck part, okay? And the computation is it's quite easy. So the H1 thing, the left hand side uh, of this uh, uh, isomorphism one we want to consider is actually isomorphic to uh, this uh, module. So it's H RAM uh, tensor. This is R RAM module, but you tensor with R Kong and also tensor with FL. Okay. Similarly, this ZL module I would denote by H N is naturally an R N module, and uh, this quotient is actually the H N tensor R Kong tensor FL. So you see, the it's very similar. I mean, the, the, sh the shape is very similar. The only difference is that here it's, uh, it's obtained from some module over H RAN, and here is obtained from some module over H on, uh, over RN. Okay? Mm. So you want to show that these two sides have the same cardinality. You only need to show that these two modules, H RAN over RN and H N over RN, they are three modules of the same rank then you are done. And this is the case actually. So here's the proposition. So suppose uh, this Galois penchant is residual episode irreducible, which we have already been supposed. The second is that this is so-called the Taylor-Wise condition. We want its base change to F zeta L remains absolutely irreducible. And the third one is a little bit technical. Okay, so for V in sigma plus, we want every polarized local lifting of this local Galois representation is minimally ramified. Okay, then both R RAM and R N are finite free modules over R RAM and R N respectively, and of the same rank. Okay, then through this proposition, we obtain the, the level raising isomorphism, which is the isomorphism between this one and this one. Okay, since I don't have time, I will ignore it because my original plan is to, to explain what does minimally ramify mean, but uh, oh. I think I will not explain anymore. So, mm -hmm. uh, because it's quite a, some Galois deformation theory. So I think I will stop this moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for the excellent lecture. So uh, mm -hmm. are there any questions? So let me ask one question. So you, you, you need to be able to be uh, sufficiently large. And uh, so it's condition is basically from this uh, liberalizing isomorphism. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the three conditions, uh, the, okay, so let, let's, let us go back. So the three conditions, I mean, as, as I explained, C is purely technical. B is, uh, sh shouldn't be there because, I mean, this is because we don't know much about the Galois representation yet. I mean, the only key condition that is special to our approach is A, is this condition. So essentially, I think a B and a C should be removable in future. But A is very hard. I mean, if we continue to use this method, A, A cannot be removed. A, A can be improved, but not, I mean, completely removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. So mm -hmm. are there more questions? So maybe you can show us uh, the, the, the last sl uh, slide. Oh, okay. We, yeah. Okay, so I will be quick. So, mm. so the point is what does it mean by a lifting is minimally ramified? Mm. Okay. So what is a minimally ramified polarized local lifting? So this concept that was actually raised by Clausel Harris Taylor like a, a decade ago when they studied Galois deformation for general rank. So let me give a, so, so I will just explain the simple, simplify the situation. Suppose that we have a Galois representation, uh, N0 dimensional Galois representation with coefficient FL. So suppose it's tamely ramified. And the, so the tam generator will act by a unipotent element of Jordan type M1 to MS, okay? So they are lifting to, to, to whatever uh, a, a, a ring with a residual field FL is so-called a minimally ramified. If rho v is tam still terminally ramified, and the rho v is conjugate to a unipotent element of the same drawdown type. Okay. So mm -hmm. in fact, uh, when you when you raise the, for example, if your original drawdown type is two one 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 one, then when you when you lift, it is possible that the drawdown type will be refined. It could be one 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 one. Okay. Mm. So the minimally ramified means that the Jordan type won't be ramified. So this Jordan type will somehow will characterize how ramified a representation, a tam, uh, uh, a unipotent matrix could be. So this minimally ramified, which means you cannot ramify, have further ramification when you, when you lift. Okay. So mm -hmm. we have extended this notion to to any place V plus, uh, I mean, this is quite technical if V ramifies in F. I mean, this is a technical work, but the, the essential idea is this one. And the, there's a proposition is the following, suppose L is larger than N zero, then the local deformation problem classifying minimally ramified polarized lifting is a formal, formally smooth over CL of pure relative dimension N zero square. Okay. And for, for experts, uh, you know that this is a very important local uh, ingredient for any uh, like R equal T theorem. Okay, mm -hmm. so so the point is that uh, how does uh, so when when does uh, I mean in our main theorem we only see when L is large enough, right? We we in the theorem we never mention the word minimally ramified, but here it comes an additional condition like a minimally ramified. So actually we proved the theorem which we call the automatic minimality. So if you have a compatible system of a Galois representation coming from automorphic form, so the for, it is expected that for L large enough, or, and you fix a, a, a place V, for L large enough, or local uh, deformation of this Galois representation should always be minimally ramified automatically. Okay, so let me say, this is a conjecture, so we call the rigidity of automorphic representation. So we mm -hmm. fix the final set of sigma plus of primes of A plus, then for all but finitely many primes lambda of E, depending on sigma plus, we have, this is a residual absolute irreducible. These are all the conjectures, okay? The third one, for any V in plus, every polarized local lifting is automatically minimally ramified, okay? Mm -hmm. So homework, verify the above conjecture for n equal two. Mm -hmm. okay. This is not hard, okay? So theorem, suppose pi is supercuspidal somewhere, mm. then the above conjecture holds, okay? So uh, let me give a remark. So originally we also need a pi to be a twist of Steinberg in some place not above sigma plus in order to deal with the Taylor-Wise condition. But the later Toby G told us an argument to remove this restriction. So now mm. the theorem is very clean. You only need to pi to be super cuspid or somewhere. Okay. So this conjecture, the automatic minimality is, is true for L large enough. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. So are there more questions? Okay, so thank you very okay, much. Thank you. The, yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you very much for the uh, mm -hmm. next beautiful lecture. Okay.